side, trying to get him a little closer to the corner. Uh-oh, turnbuckle three, but blocked by Piper and given to Rose. And Miller gets Piper from outside the ring. Piper gets an elbow on Williams. Gets a shot on Rose. Rose holding on with one foot. Trying to keep Piper from getting the tag. The tag is to Miller. Crazy foot. Turnbuckle treatment, and that was that left eye. That went into the top turnbuckle treatment. Now the whip. No, it's reversed. It's Miller into the corner. Taken out with a shoulder throw. Sandy Barr over to cut Rose up and interfere. The tag to Luke Williams. Williams catches double club blow to the midsection, but Piper got a lot of steam left in him. The punch didn't do that much damage. He is caught from the elbow to the chin, catapulting over the ropes, off the ropes, and only a count of two. Piper is taking amazing punishment in there. He ducks underneath that one, punches, and goes to the wrong corner. Goes to a neutral corner. Now dies. Savage has the tag. Katie by the door. Rose is down. Now Miller ran into Williams. Rose given a turnbuckle treatment. The Flying Dutchman out. SOB. Sam out of her bag. Bulldogs him. He's got Williams with the Bulldogger. A sure pin. Bass unloads on Rose, who came in to interfere. Rose, turnbuckle treatment, followed by Williams, turnbuckle treatment. Rose gets one from Savage. Piper back in, working on Williams. Line tackle, put Williams down. Uh-oh, he went into the ropes. The slick shot off, Miller. Pulled it, bottom rope down, and Piper went out over the top. Both Bass and Savage are over there checking on him. And in trying to get up, he has pulled the skirt of the ring completely off. His partner is getting back into the ring, and he's just back in for punishment. Pile driver coming up, Luke Williams. Pile driving Piper, one, two, and three. Bass reaching in, trying to save him. Now Rose is going up to the top turnbuckle. He's going to come off on Piper. The first ball will go to the Army. In 10 minutes, 47 seconds, winner of the first ball, the Army. January 6, 1980, AWA, Minneapolis, Minnesota, the television there. Jerry Blackwell took on, beat Ron Ritchie. Steve Olsonowski defeated Kenny J. Greg Gagne defeated Ricky Hunter. Jesse Ventura defeated Buck Zumhoff. January 6, 1980, in Dallas, Texas, for big time wrestling to feature world class. On to the giant beat Mark Lewin. January 6, 1980, Savannah, Georgia. For the Mid-Atlantic Territory, Ric Flair defeated Greg Valentine. January 6, 1980, in Tokyo for a new Japan card. Jinji Harada defeated Hiroyuki Sa Saido in 807. Makoto uh, Arakawa defeated George Takano 823 with a backslide. William Ruska defeated Kuniaki Kobayashi in 659 with a cross armbar. Steve Kern and Skip Young defeated Kantaro Hoshino and Kengo Kimura in 1107. Ricky Choshu defeated the Dynamite Kid by disqualification in 815. Seiji Sakaguchi defeated Asamo Kido in 1018. Tatsumi Fujinami defeated Mesa Sieda, Masa Sato, 906 with a rolling clutch. Two out of three falls match. Bad News Allen teamed up with Stan Hansen as they defeated 
Haruka Aiken and Strong Kobayashi. And Antonio Inoki defeated Rocky Johnson in 909 with the rolling clutch. January 6, 1980, Chiba Japan for all Japan Pro Wrestling. Masanubo Fuchi defeated Shiro Koshinaka in 1259. Mitsuo Momoda defeated Mr. Hiroshi by disqualification in 1047. Masayo Ito defeated Atsushi Onita in 935. Metashi Okuma defeated Morinari Higo in 1402. Great Kojika defeated J Jerry Novak at 11-12 with a half Boston Crab. Tiger Taguchi fought a double countout with Angelo Mosca in 10 minutes 13 seconds. Bruiser Brody defeated Rocky Hata 549. And two out of three falls match, Shushi Giant Baba, Jumbo Shusha Ruda, and Jenner Chiro Tenru defeated Billy Robinson, Dutch Mantel, and Bill Irwin. January 7th, 1980, Greenberg, South Carolina. Greg Valentine once again loses to Ric Flair. January 7th, 1980, Augusta, Georgia. Wendy Rector won an eight-woman battle royal. Steve Travis defeated Eddie Mansfield. Ole Anderson and Thunderbolt Patterson defeated Killer Khan and Tor Professor Toru Tanaka. Donny Atlas defeated Tom Shaft. Mr. Wrestling 2 defeated Austin Idol. Georgia Tag Team Champions Ivan Koloff and Alexa Smirnoff defeated the Briscoes. In a cage match, the Mass Superstar defeated Tommy Wildfire Rich. And in, in the main other cage match, Ole Anderson got a victory over Ivan Koloff. January 7th, 1980, West Palm Beach, Florida. Manny Fernandez defeated Ernie Ladd. Eddie Graham and Dusty Rhodes beat Bad Leroy Brown and Bugsy McGraw. In a Texas death match, Mike Graham defeated the Super Destroyer. Brian St. John and Stanley Lane defeated Gordon Nelson and Don Diamond. Louis Asteo defeated Mike Miller. Don Serrano beat Rip Oliver. Bubba Douglas over Sir Oliver Humperdinck. Controversial manner and fashion. All right, another controversy. Another controversy down in the ring, and Piper wants to go after him. Piper's being blocked by Sandy Barr. Saying, don't do it. Savage is in the ring. Sam Bass down in the ring. And the victory will go to the Army. But not a, uh, well, let's at the very least say a controversial victory. And up right now to talk with us in the Crow's Nest, one Rowdy Rowdy Piper along with Stan, the man Stasiak. Well, next Saturday, I didn't think this time would come this soon, but I couldn't have a better partner. Next Saturday, Roddy Piper and I are going for the tag team belt, and uh, this is going to be a new thing for me. I know how bad Roddy wants the title. I really know how bad he wants it, and you know how bad I want it. I uh, lost a couple of titles here the, quite co controversially, and... Uh, I'm anxious to get back in the thick of things and get the titles back around my waist. Listen, listen to me. I got me a partner here, and this is the most important match because listen why. Listen why. If, if this week we win our matches, if next Saturday we win matches, then that means that we are the top contenders, and do you know what that means, Bloody Rose? That means that if we are the top contenders, we are next in line to wrestle you, Buddy Rose. You listen to me. Buddy Rose, it is working. We've been doing a lot of talking up here, insulting Buddy Rose. Listen to me. I have a scoop for you. Today, Buddy Rose phoned me on the telephone, and he says, Pipe. No, 
she calls me pipe now. When he was putting fingers in my eyes, he was saying something about sunny beaches. Now he calls me pipe. Listen to me, buddy Rose. He says, pipes, let's let bygones be bygones. Just give me a break, he says. You've been harassing me on TV. Just give me one thing. But let me tell you something, buddy Rose. The only thing I want to give you is a three-week vacation to Iran, brother. That's all I want to give you. Listen to me, buddy Rose. You take a look at this guy right here. You think you're going to home swap on me, buddy Rose? You are wrong. Look at this picture. I have seen better pictures on Dave Wall, buddy Rose. Just looking at you. Just looking at you makes me listless and irregular. But after after talking to you on the telephone, I realize that the only thing that is wrong with you, Buddy Rose, it's curable. It's curable. Just one four-ounce bar of X-Lax is all you need to carry you, Buddy Rose. That's all, brother. Listen to me. I got a fight here with Buddy Rose. Buddy Rose, you take a look at me. I know you're fearing. I know you're shaking. The promoter got on. The commission, the commission is getting in gear now. The commission is worried. They're saying, why haven't you fought Roddy Piper, Buddy Rose? Why haven't you fought Roddy Piper when you got open contact? Listen to me, Buddy Rose. Listen, you are in for the treat of your life, Buddy Rose. You know my reputation. You know I am Rowdy Roddy Piper, brother. I'm so tough. I don't shave. I just rub my face against the concrete, Buddy Rose. Listen to me, brother. Listen to me. I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread, Buddy Rose. Look at me. I got more glide in my stride, more dips in my hips. I know how to get down in the back of the shack where it's all got in the big city, in the nitty gritty. And I'm looking damn pretty, Buddy Rose. You listen to me, brother. You listen to me, Buddy Rose. One thing. One thing, Buddy Rose. One thing. We beat you next Saturday, Buddy Rose. And you are mine, brother. January 7th, 1980, Ainami, Japan. This is a new Japan Pro Wrestling card that 2,000 people attended. Shoshi Kai and George beat George Takano. William Ruska defeated Junji Harada. Haruka Aigen defeated Makato Arakawa. Kantoro Hoshino defeated Kuniaki Kobayashi. Strong Kobayashi def- fought a double count, double disqualification, and made a say. Saido in 944. Bad News Allen fought a double count on Ricky Choshu. Steve Kern st- Skip Young defeated Kengo Kamura, Asamo Kido. Seiji Sakaguchi fought a double count out with Rocky Johnson. And two out of three falls match. Antonio Inoki and Tatsumi Fujinami defeated Dynamite Kid and Stan Hansen. Also on the 7th. Of January 1980, the All Japan card in Miyagi, Japan. Mitsuo Momoda defeated Shiro Kashinaki in 12:13. Masanobu Fuchi defeated Atsushi Onita in 12:03. Mr. Hayashi defeated Muni Norihigo in 11:51. Matoshi Okuma defeated Maseo Ito in 13:49. Genichiro Tenru defeated Bill Irwin with a rolling clutch hole 12-15. Rocky Hata defeated Dutch Mantel. Billy Robinson took a win off from Great Kojika. And a two out of three falls match, Shushi Baba, Jumbo Tushiruda, and Tiger Takuchi teamed up to defeat Bruiser Brody, Angela Mosca, Jerry Novak. We've got one more card, ladies and gentlemen, as we go on to the seventh of January in Memphis, Tennessee, what you're looking at here. Buddy Wayne defeated Jerry Barber. Jerry Bryant defeated Bud Smith. Sonny King beat Paul Ellering. Jimmy Hart, Jerry Lawler, and Jimmy Valiant defeated Big Red, Ricky Morton, and Steve Regal. And the Assassins regained their Southern Tag Team titles that we had saw earlier from Rick and Robert Gibson. I want to thank you, everybody, for This Is Wrestling 80. It was an experiment getting the first one out of the way, some many parts. But hopefully with y'all support and as this podcast gets better and better and I get the support of the wrestling community, this could become much greater. I can't do it without your support or the subscribers. And this is for educational, just a week in history, January 1st through the 7th, 1980. 
Thank you very much. I've been Sabu Steve. Have a wonderful day. Well, you're right. I got Ken Lucas coming up again. Now, I don't know what it is about Ken Lucas. I don't know if it's the fact that, uh, you know, he's new in the area or what it is, but the guy has suddenly got an extreme case of the big head. And I want to tell you why he's got it. He's got it because of people like you, Dave. And he's got it because of people like these idiots out here who think that Ken Lucas is really something. And now, everywhere he's ever wrestled all his life, he has been a bum. I mean an absolute bum. He's a nobody. Nobody had ever heard of him. I'd certainly never heard of him before he came in here. Now, he comes in here, and all of the people think he's really hot stuff. So when Ken Lucas hears everybody cheering for him, he gets to thinking he's hot stuff. You've had your problems with him recently, though. What do you mean I've had my problems with him? Well, I mean, Ken, we, we saw the results last week. Okay, all right. Faced and all of that. Well, he, he, and then last week he won the match, right? But see, here's, I, I know that's what you're thinking, but here's the difference. There's two things in wrestling. You can either win the match or you can beat your opponent. Now, to me, beating your opponent is more important than winning the match. Now, that's what happened last week. He won the match. Oh, he got a three count, but I beat him like a dog. I beat him so bad that he don't want any more. That he don't want. I, I tell you what, we just happen to have uh, have a videotape of that match. And if you don't mind, why don't you? Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Let's before, take a look. Wait a minute. No, wait. Before we take a look at it, let me explain something to you first. Let me tell you something. Now, as long as you're going to try to pull these little tricks out of the bag and run a tape little in trick. here, let me just tape. tell the people, let me give them a little background on this tape. You know, last week, like I said, Ken Lucas is an absolute nobody. Now, I, w I could beat him ten times in ten minutes, and I knew this. So what I was doing before the match, I was sitting around relaxing, Jimmy and I, watching a little TV in the dressing room, and I was eating a box of popcorn, okay? Now, I happen to have, I know this has happened to you, Dave. I happened to get a little piece of popcorn underneath one of my teeth, between between my teeth, you understand? I hear you. Now, I, that was bothering me all night long. Now, you can go ahead and roll the film, but I want you to know that's what I had on my mind, and it distracted me all night long. Now, look, let's, let's, I, let's, I, let's, I watch the film. Keep my microphone on, okay? Yeah, yeah, just, just watch this. Okay, now look, first of all, let me tell you, here's where everybody thinks Ken Lucas is really something. This guy couldn't break an egg with a hammer. Look at those punches. Uh -huh. You see that? Now, let me tell you something else about my tactics. I've told you about how I beat my opponents in the ring. I let them build their confidence. I, I, I lull them into a false sense of security. What I am doing right now is making Ken Lucas think that he has got the upper hand. Look at me. I ought to be in Hollywood. He ain't hurting me. He ain't hurting me a bit, and I'm just letting him pound there because, like I said, he can hit me all night and never make a dent, baby. He can't break an egg. He is a punk. He is a nobody. He's a clown. He shouldn't even be in a wrestling business. He saw, look at him right there. He saw he couldn't hurt me by beating on me, so he's starting to bite me like a little girl. Now, is that some wrestler? Look at him. This is disgusting. And you people sit out there and try to make the guy think he's really something. He is actually biting me on the face. Now, what is wrong with a guy like that? Now, look at you, Dave. you got that funny little smirk on your face now. You realize that he is... Now, look. Look at that. Yeah, yeah this is trick right photography. Hand. And we already saw that once. What are they doing? They've spliced the film together and they're showing the thing, same thing over and over. Look at this. No, he just threw a lot of right punches and connected with yeah, him. Yeah, I just threw him down on his face, too, didn't I? Right now, look here. I'm looking for a toothpick to get that popcorn out. And I can't find it. So I'm saying, Jimmy, have you got a toothpick? He said, no, but why don't you run Lucas' head into the chair while we got a minute? So now look at Ken Lucas. What a dirty dog. Can you see that? You sure did. He actually used there a foreign object right like here. Okay, he got the three count. Yeah, Big who deal. was holding the foreign object? Look, what I said a while ago, you got two situations. You can either win the match or you can beat your opponent. Now he won the match, so I'm fixing to beat my opponent right here. I am fixing to do a number on this guy because I've been letting him get away with something here. I'm fixing to do a number on him. I'm fixing to beat him so bad. See, there's where he made his mistake right there. Reading for Jimmy he jumped Hart. on Jimmy Hart. Well, he shouldn't have done that because here comes the king, baby. I'm fixing to cut his lights out right now. I'm going to beat him so bad that they're going to have to empty the dressing room. They're going to have to send some wrestlers in to try to help this man. Now you watch. Here I come. Get ready, Ken Lucas. That's right. Put out the lights. It's all over for him right now. This is what you call beating your opponent. This is why I say Ken Lucas is a nobody, he is a nothing, he is not in the same league or the category as a king, and they realize this. Now the promoter Jerry Jarrett is standing in the back right now and he's seeing, uh oh, here's Ken Lucas. He's the newest wrestler I got around here and Lawler fixed to kill him, so I better send somebody out there to save him. 
So what does he do? He sends them jerks to Gibson's out here in just a minute. Now look at look at Lucas rolling around on the mat. He is screaming. I wish he had a microphone in the ring because right now he's crying. He's begging the referee, please get Mr. Lawler off of me before he kills me. Look at him. They point out it's two against one here. The oh, match is over. Two against one. You think Jimmy Hart gonna hurt somebody? What's the matter with you, man? There's the Gibsons coming in to save him. Now who is left laying on the mat? You will never see the king left laying like that. That's what I'm telling you. This guy is a nobody. He is a nothing. And do you realize they even had the audacity to want me to put up a make it a world title match with this guy Christmas night. It's not going to be a world title match because he does not deserve a shot at the belt. He is not a world class wrestler. He is not a contender. He is a nobody. They wanted me to put the belt up to make the people think he's somebody, but I'm sorry. He's not. Well, in spite of that, he's got the victory. Maybe he does deserve a shot. How can he have the audacity to claim a victory when you people just saw it right there on your TVs? The film don't lie. He was left laying in the middle of the ring, and they had to come out and save him. Would you call that the victor? But he won the match. His hand was raised in the match. Big deal. You have to Big deal. He is a joke. He don't belong in matches with me, much less championship match. He don't even belong in the ring with me. Be neck, I got now they booked him against me again, and he don't deserve a shot with me. I'll beat him and it'll take me about five minutes to dispose of this guy. I'm not gonna do what I did last week. I'm not gonna let the guy think he's got the upper hand any during the match. I'm just gonna beat him right in the middle okay. of the match. Okay, okay. That's it. Then I, it will be a non-title match, right? That's exactly right. Okay. Non-title match. Non -title match. It'll be Lawler <laughs> against Ken Lucas. Oh that I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I did, and I, I, I want to come out here and explain something to the people. Uh, I just listened to Jerry Lawler belittle Lucas and belittle the wrestling, and, and I want to explain something. We've got a, we've got a new year starting out. Um, Buddy and I have been in negotiations with Jerry Lawler for, uh, oh gee, what, two months now for a 1980 contract. Uh, you know, all, all the people are familiar with Pete Rose and all the problems that they have in, in signing some of the big stars and, and what, the, what the different promotions or our teams have to go through mm -hmm. to settle with them. Well, Jerry Lawler has made what used to be an enjoyable business for me, promo promoting professional wrestling, a nightmare. We've had to, we've had to cater to him. Uh, we've had to pay him an unbelievable amount of money. Uh, more than he's worth and the 1980 contract that he he and his people presented to us is it borders on insanity um, Buddy and I have been trying to to lower prices with the cost of gas and a lot of our fans come from the surrounding towns It makes it real difficult for people to enjoy the sport or the recreation or whatever they like so we we've been working very hard to try to cut corners and and cut prices and still maintain the quality talent so that we could, in fact, lower prices instead of raise work. Now, in order to sign Jerry Lawler's contract for 1980, uh, we figured it out on, with a pencil and piece of paper. We'd have to raise prices in every city we do business with a dollar and a quarter. So that's how ridiculous it is. Now, we're not going to do that. Uh, furthermore, Jerry has stood out here and he says that Lucas is a nobody and that that's a nothing match. So what I want to say to you is that when you go over the card, uh, for the Memphis card Monday, okay. um, Tuesday, right. Tuesday, uh, Christmas, we're, go we're going to just treat it like it's a nothing match. And we're going to move Mr. Lola down on the third match on the card. And no, no longer the main event, then, right? No. He says, that, he says that it's not a main event match, and uh, if he doesn't feel that it, that it rates main event match uh, stat status, then we'll put it on the preliminary match where it goes. We want to tell the people and that uh, we're no longer going to cater to Mr. Jerry Lawler. Uh, we, as a matter of fact, Christmas may be his last match. Uh, Christmas may be his last match because, well, I'll tell him personally. Uh, Jerry, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Wait a minute, now. wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you wait a minute. You've been, you've been wanting an answer to us, what we were going to do about 1980. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do about it. We're not going to do anything about it. We're not going to sign your contract. We're not going to pay you your big guarantees. We're not going to raise prices to accommodate you. You can go the way of Mr. Pete Rose and you can change organizations. Uh, and as for Christmas Day, the match is a nothing you say with Ken Lucas. So we'll treat it as such and we'll put you down on the preliminary match where you belong.
Yeah. Heath throw? Yeah. Heath throw? Give him a big hand there. That was quite a little performance, wasn't it? <laughs> but let me just say this, Jerry, really, in all sincerity. Now, I, I really hate, you know, you're, you're talking about contracts and stuff. This is really, this is really things that's better left in the wrestling offices, you know, away from the TV. But if, if you want to air your dirty laundry out here, then we'll just air some. Now, I, I just hate to say this. I mean, that was a nice little performance, but in all sincerity, I can read you like a book. Do you realize that? I know what you're trying to do. Do you know what he's trying to do, Dave? Uh, it sounds to me like he just told it like it was. No, right no, here. I'm sorry. See, that's that's what he wants you to think. That's what he wants all the people out there watching to think. But what he is trying to do, he is trying to stand out here and shame me into making this a title match. He wants me to put up the World Heavyweight Championship against Ken Lucas because he thinks Ken Lucas is hot stuff. He wants me to stand here and tell you people that Ken Lucas is a good wrestler, that he has a chance to beat me. But I'm sorry, Jerry Jarrett, he is not a good wrestler. He does not have a chance to beat me. And you want me to put the title match up so it'll be a big important match on your Christmas card. But wait a minute, I just, I just got an idea. Now you're talking about the contracts. Why don't we do this? And you like Ken Lucas so well. Why don't we do this? I'll wrestle Ken Lucas and I'll put up the belt. But let's have you put up something too because you believe in him. I believe in myself enough to put up the belt. Why don't we say this? If I if I beat or if Ken Lucas beats me, then he's got the belt. You've got yourself a new world champion and I'll sign the old, and you talk about ridiculous, 1979 contract, Mr. Moneybags. I'll sign it. That's right, where I have to run up and down the highways with, the, look, you know, I'll sign it and, and, and be penniless and all next year. I'll do that. But let's say this. If I beat Mr. Ken Lucas, then you sign my 1980 contract. What about that, huh? Um, hey, that's fair enough. That's fair enough, man. I have been, I've been, been very tolerant letting you talk because I feel like that it's your last time to to run your mouth on Memphis TV. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want your CWA title match, and I don't want, I don't want you 